I'm Kate Campbell Stevenson, and today we have our honored guest, Helen Delich Bentley, with us. And she just recently was inducted into the Maryland Women's Hall of Fame, and she is on the uh, advisory, uh, on the honorary board for the Maryland Women's Heritage Center. Welcome, Helen, and thank you so much for being with us. Well, thank you. I am delighted to be here, and I'm also delighted to be part of the Heritage not only of Maryland, but also in the country for women. I, uh, you know, I'm in my 90th year. And you're doing great. Oh. And you know what? God has been good, and I'm happy. Well, I'm so pleased to hear that. We're happy to have you here because you've been, you're such a legend here in the state of Maryland and actually nationally for all your many contributions to maritime laws and maritime community committees and serving in Congress. Well, I go back. My parents were immigrants, both of them. They raised five children, and, two, and then two other children died in their early. But they were always proud people, and I think that's what's important. Everybody in the family has been proud to do well. And to contribute here. And contribute yes. to the development of communities and the country. Helen, what an honor to be inducted to the Maryland Women's Hall of Fame. How are you feeling about that? Well, I'm glad it happened finally. <laughs> I, I kept wondering, what have I done wrong that I, I'm being passed over? And then I found out that everybody thought I was, and nobody looked into the, what had slipped under the door. <laughs> well, we're then, thrilled that you're in now. <laughs> I am too. I am too. There were several uh, women there who you've mentored. Well, tell me about that group. That well, there were um, 
Senator Gloria Lala, who introduced me. Gloria and I became friends some time ago through another woman who is no longer with us, who was a friend to both of us, and she brought us together. And I was glad I was able to encourage Gloria to go on and run. Gloria, you can do it. You're going to be a good senator. And now she's a cabinet officer. And she's great. She was one. Ellen Sauerbrey and I go back a long way. And we were friends for a long time, and we became bitter enemies at one point, opponents in a primary election. And now we're back as friends. Um, it's important for women to support it is, other women. It is. We were thrilled that you were inducted to the Maryland Women's Hall of Fame. There were, there were so many exciting things happening. We had dinner at the governor's mansion. And it was a delightful dinner. Yeah. Well, let's go and take a look. At this time, I welcome Secretary Gloria Lawler to the podium to introduce her nominee, Helen Benton. Good evening. To my colleague on the cabinet, Ted, good to see you. And certainly to my former colleague in the Senate, the Congressman, good to see you, Andy. And on behalf of our Governor, Martin O'Malley, and our Lieutenant Governor, and the Maryland Department of Aging, congratulations to all of our honorees, and welcome to all of you. You know, it's a distinct pleasure to be here for Helen Bentley. She is one fabulous woman. Helen, it looks like you're gonna get and numerous awards this year. This is your year to shine. You know, when I, we, most of us think of Helen, we think of her as being in Congress. But she has spent 65 years involved with the Port of Baltimore. 65 years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that deserves a And we are just so very proud of her. I have with me tonight, standing here. She here? Delegate Sue Allman also who will follow me. So I'm going to be short because it is in your program. Everything that she's, no, just a smidgen of what she's done is in your program. And so I'm working, because if you were to listen to Helen, you could listen to her all day and all night. It's fabulous. She is Maryland. You know, her history is a history of women in Maryland. But here's what Helen had to say about herself. She just got the first Citizen Award. That is very prestigious, given to her by the Maryland Senate. And here are, here's her own quote. I must be doing something right. <laughs> Maryland is classified as a blue state, reliable, liberal, and true. I am not only a Republican, but also I am a woman. And I am still above ground. <laughs> yes, you are. And so it gives me pleasure to stand here to nominate you for the Women's Hall of Fame. But you know, I knew we would have standing room only tonight when I looked at all of the names of the honorees. And I know everybody's sitting in this room. Jean's not here, but I will say this about Jean. She was wonderful. And Jean's daughter and my daughter went to college together. They went to your bed. They're your big friends. And so I don't know where the family is tonight, but um, <laughs> oh yeah, she's very special to me. And so now I'd like to bring up um, Delta Sue Arman also to speak for, for Helen. Thank you. It's such a pleasure to be here in the honor of a fantastic lady. The ladies in leadership would like to offer you a citation from all of us and some flowers on congratulating you, congratulating you for tonight and your prestigious leadership in Maryland. Thank you. That was really impressive. Stay with us. We'll be right back.
all the towns immediately in this area, as well as going out to the entire state of Maryland, as we pointed out recently. All of these towns in this area have industries that involve importing and exporting over on into the eastern shore. Well, Helen, it's a great pleasure being able to repeat this history of the Port of Baltimore. Welcome back to Her Story. Helen, do you have any advice that you could share for our young people who are wanting to go into public service or business? Well, let me tell you, I just did a letter the other day. A sister, an older sister, is preparing a scrapbook of letters from prominent women for her younger sister for her graduation. And in that letter, I emphasize to her character, integrity, accuracy, honesty, and be yourself. That's great advice. That's wonderful. Helen, I feel such a debt of gratitude for how you persevered and broke through the glass ceiling because you didn't have anybody to do that for you. No, I really didn't. And you know, when the men came back from World War II, there were only three. The, the Sun paper only kept three women in the morning newsroom. Martha Sheps, Ann Hutchison, and, oh no, there were four, Marge Mathis and Ann Hutchison and myself, and then Martha Sheps came in later. But other than that, they didn't have any women around there. And we had to make our way, and we had to stand our ground, or we'd have been swept under. And we were able to. We had to. Well, I want to say a personal thank you for all that you've done for the state of Maryland, for the, the Port of Baltimore, but mostly, I think, for women, showing them that if you have these strong personal character traits, that you can accomplish yeah. whatever you set your mind to. Yeah. You have to know what you're doing. You have to be sure of yourself, and then you have to be determined. And once in a while, you might go home and cry. But don't let anybody else see you cry. There you go. There was a t you may recall that at one, one point that Joe Mc Senator Joe McCarthy was going after everybody. And he happened to concentrate on the Greek ship owners alleging that they were going into North Korea, serving North Korea. And we were having a ship launching in that period of Greek ship owner ships built here at Sparrows mm -hmm. Point. And all these, the families were coming down for the, for the uh, launching. I knew many of them, the Kulakunases, the Golandrises, etc. And I spoke to them at the ship launching. Are your ships involved? Is this happening? That Senator McCarthy is going after? I said, no, Helen, it is not. Anyhow, I had this story that the Greek ship owners were not doing what they were being accused of by Senator Joe McCarthy. And I went back to the office and I started writing. And the office thought, well, this is such an important story. We can't have a little girl uh. writing it, right? So they brought Phil Potter over from uh, Washington to do this story with me. And I was so mad and so hurt. I was crushed. And I slammed out of the office and said, I'm quitting. And I left. Well, my managing editor came up to my apartment on his way home. He said, Helen, you can't do this now. Calm down. This is such an important story. I said, but who got the story? Right. I did. He didn't. I should have the byline. He said, I hear you. Calm down. I'll talk to you tomorrow. So I had to swallow my pride. 
since I had nowhere to go, <laughs> I stayed. <laughs> I stayed. But that was quite a night. And, and Phil Hawk Potter, I have to tell you this. Phil Potter was the city editor, the night city editor, on my first day at the Sun Paper. My first day, my first assignment was Flag Day, 1945, was to go out and cover the Elks flag mm. ceremony. And the day city editor had said, we want a half call. So I came back and I started writing half call. I sent a lead up. The booming voice from up the end of the room. You stupid son of a bitch. Ah. Don't you know any, have any sense to come up and talk to the city desk when you come back from a story? That was Phil Potter. And I swear, if, I, if he hadn't been going overseas at that point to cover the rest of the war, I would have walked out of the sun then because I was so shook. And then to have Phil Potter be the guy that got my Joe McCarthy story. Well, the good part of it was that the Joe McCarthy people were not happy with <laughs> any of us later. So <laughs> it worked out. But Phil and I, we became good friends, finally. Well, that's, that is a, a situation that many people and many women and men run across. Yeah. You have to, but you have to speak up and fight for your turf. Absolutely. You have to. You can't just... Okay, go ahead and do what you want. No. no. This is wrong. And Well, that's where the integrity comes out. This honesty exactly. and integrity. And that no matter what happens, that will, uh, you, will you will benefit always from, from being that, that way. And a good part of that whole thing was that Joe McCarthy was taken down at that time. Helen, it was just so exciting for me to see you up there speaking and, and getting the recognition that you so deserved. Well, thank you. I enjoyed it, and I enjoyed being here with you today. So let's go back to the Hall of Fame. There's somebody I would like to introduce who's here. Barbara Franklin. Are you still in the room? Stand up. <laughs> Barbara Franklin is the first White House staffer who was employed specifically for the purpose of finding excellent women to work in Washington in the federal government. She was, that was done by President Nixon and uh, she has finished a book recently, A Matter of Simple Justice, to talk about how important it is and has been to get women where we are going. We still have a way to go, and I'm not through. And, uh, there's one correction I want to make. The gentleman who was speaking, no. The first woman to run for governor in the state of Maryland was Louise Gore. <laughs> you know, I'm old enough that I can say anything I want to say. <laughs> and I've never been known as one who pulls punches. But tonight I'm going to be kinder and gentler. And that is what President Papa Bush has always accused me of not being. When he's, every time he's saying me, he says, Helen, are you kinder and gentler? Tonight I am. Record. And if my husband were still alive and here, he would say, Helen, behave yourself. You know, he was always um, a little jealous. <laughs> And sometimes I think almost resentful that he thought I was married to the Port of Baltimore instead of him. <laughs> I do appreciate this honor today by the Maryland Commission for Women. And when I was being interviewed out here, they said, you know, Helen, we, 
you know, we're a little late on you. Um, well, everybody always thought you were in there, but we couldn't find your name all of a sudden. <laughs> but I want to say this, I'm glad tonight to share this honor with my fellow, the other five, one family and the other four persons. And they're two Republicans, Jean Cryer and it's her family. And Jean we all loved. Mm -hmm. Ellen Sauerbein, and then the three Democrats. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Dukes, Linda Shavitz, and Beatrice Tignor. I gotta say this, it's a pretty prestigious group of honorees. History Month breakfast, and we had Admiral retired Sally Bryce O'Hara speaking there, and Sally was giving us a little not lecture, but she referred to an article in the Wall Street Journal this past month, the past week I think, about the queen bees, and that being queen bees is part of the problem of women. Well, I've never been a queen bee. <laughs> I've only tried to help women as we've gone along, along with my court. I could uh, say, um, Helen Holton was designated to be my escort today. And Helen said, I hated the name of Helen <laughs> when my family gave it to me. How many Helens are there here in the room today? <laughs> Only two or three are there. Anyhow, it's a great name. <laughs> I remember the name Helen of Troy, or the person Helen of Troy. Right. Helen of Troy was a myth. She was part of Greek mythology. But I'm here to tell you, I'm not a myth. <laughs> I really have christened 17 American flag ocean going ships. Commissioners, <laughs> <laughs> commission members, look around the room. There are plenty of women wanting this recognition every year. And I want to say, women are an amazing lot. And if, even way back, if the men hadn't had them in the back room was doing all of the detailed work, we would never be where we are today. Apply yourself. I am appreciative, Commission members, because as I said the other day, I still am above ground. <laughs> Think what a Tusami it might have been if I wasn't, and all of a sudden I heard what was going on above me, and I decided to explode in order to thank you. And I do thank you. I loved your feisty speech. It was wonderful to hear from your, your story. Well, it was difficult to try and condense it into three minutes as I, bet it was. As I was told to do, <laughs> but I did it. Helen, you broke through so many barriers, and I know you're a real pioneer, one of the first women to do in, in the television industry here in Baltimore. Yes, I was, and you know, I never thought about it at that time, but Mike Wickline and others keep telling me now, do you realize what you really did way back then? And I said, no, I just wanted to promote the part, and I had to figure out how to do it. And uh, now that I stop thinking about it, it really was a, a breakthrough that I think has been beneficial to a lot of people. Those films, that's all, that was all done on 16 millimeter film. 
and 16 millimeter is not as easy to edit as we do today with the digital and the DVD and the whatever else. Uh, but all of those films are at the Baltimore Museum of Industry. And Mike Wickline has a, a friend who's a friend of mine, and he's in the film business. He goes down there and he puts out, takes some of the films, and he runs them down there in a con on their machines so that when people come in, they can see some of this old stuff. But the important thing of those films that I did were they were, they are of industries that existed mm. back 40, 50 years ago, 60 years ago, and do not exist anymore. Oh, wow. Mm. And some of the families, some of the descendants of some of the men in those films, of, of, when they hear about them, they want copies of them. So B, the BMI, the Balmer Museum of Industry, uh, is making those available when the person is specific and they know what it is they want. But um, it's a it's a great rec recording of what Maryland was like 60 years ago. It is 60 years, God. Well, you captured the history and uh -huh. generations since then have benefited from your pioneer uh, pioneering in the television industry. And the pushing of the port, yes. And that was all encompassed together. The promotion, the filming, the writing, and saying, this is our economic engine, people. Keep it going. Mm -hmm. Very, very important. Yeah. Very important. Thank you for sharing that. And I'll make sure to get, go down and take a look at some of those films. I hope you will. You know, one of the stories that I have on that film is the nuclear ship Savannah. The nuclear ship Savannah was built by the United States of America as the first and probably only cargo ship with a nuclear engine. And the ship was built up here in, in uh, Chester, Pennsylvania. Pat Nixon christened it. No, Pat Nixon, I think, laid the keel, and Mamie Eisenhower christened it. And the ship sailed for a few years, but because Japan was so sensitive to nuclear mm -hmm. energy, to the nuclear bomb, Japan would not let the ship come in to their ports, and of course that took away some of the potential business and the ship did not sail that long. That ship without its nuclear engine is still is tied up in the port of Baltimore because the port of Savannah refused to accept it as a museum piece. Hmm. So it is a museum here, no nuclear engine, but the ship is here. We've had a wonderful time here with Helen. Thank you so much for being our guest today. Thank you for having me. It's our pleasure. Mm -hmm.